But that's another one here. The thing. The and thing, exactly one right. One over, one over, one by, yeah. All right, let's have a look. So you've got your circle. You've got a charge up here. A charge here. A charge here. Now, these are all positive charges. So which way is the field pointing, in or out? You ready there guys? Yeah? It's pointing out. So there's a field out here. There's also one out here. And there's one out here. Now if this one's a 4 micro, this one's a 2 micro, and this one's a 2 micro. Right here in the centre, we want the electric field strength caused by that field. Now what's the distance here? Um, we're given it. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> So the formula for the electric field strength is K Q over R squared. Uh, what's the K? It's 8.99 times 10 to the 9, isn't it? It's the 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Yeah. Times the Q, which is 4 micro over the R squared, which is 4.33 times 10 to the minus 2 squared. So the answer will be in newtons per coulomb. Can someone hit that in, please? Yeah. You might as mark. And. I promise you, uh, there's no way to avoid it because the September students had their exam and the person who checked my correction said, oh, we have to mark this student down because they had the wrong units and I didn't mark them down. Oh. Perhaps because I missed it or whatever. Uh, they marked the student down and this caused them to go from 40 Thirty-nine. Thirty. Oh. 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 Oh.
830 kilo newtons. I like your style. Um, uh, also, by the way, uh, not that there's anything wrong with the prefixes, but the person in SUK told me that they don't like how often I'm using prefixes. Because I have to submit all my work to them. <laughs> like coursework, exams, and all this type of stuff. Oh, you got exams? No, no, no. The exam I wrote for you end of semester one. But it's just like prefixes. Uh, anyway, uh, 830 kilo newtons for that. Now, the next part is a little bit hard. They want to know... Guys, look, the next part's a little bit tricky. They want to know, what do you get if all three fields combine? So this is only one field, okay? Now, I'll give you a little bit of uh, help here. Let me just draw it a bit bigger, what I mean is... Okay, so nice and large. Here is the 4, here is the 2, and here is the 2. It will be quite helpful if I draw these three lines in. Do we know these distances? Yeah. We do. And do we know these angles? Yeah. We do. Now let's imagine we had a small charge here, Q. According to the formula, E equals F over Q. Okay. So just to make it easy, if Q was equal to 1 Coulomb, then E would equal F. So I'll just imagine 1 Coulomb in the centre here. Then whatever the force is, then that force will be equal to the electric field strength, which is what they want. Okay? So we actually know what the force is here already. That's 433 kilo newtons, or as an electric field, 433 kilo newtons per coulomb. It doesn't really matter. It's 433. So I'm just going to write 433 here. Okay. Now, we could recalculate it for this one. Oh, and sorry. Are these positive charges? Yeah. So, and this is a positive. So I actually, I should draw it this way. 433. Yeah. Isn't that what we got a moment ago? Oh, sorry. Where the where, where the hell did I get four? Oh, what is it? Oh, his mega was right. Ah, you were correct with your mega. Good job. Uh, 19.2 mega. Uh, 10 to the... Flip it. 10 to the 6. Uh, newtons. Or newtons per coulomb if you're looking at field strength. Okay. Now, interesting. This one here, we haven't calculated the force caused by this one. But firstly, which direction will it be? Top right or bottom left? Oh. Top right, because it's being pushed away. Now, if you think about it, the, there's only one thing different in the calculation. Is the radius the same? Is one of the charges the same? Yeah, what is different? The, uh, direction is different, but what number is different? This charge is different. Exactly how is it different? Oh. It's half, which means when you calculate it, what will happen to the force? Oh. It'll be half also. So this will be um, 19.6 9 .6, is it? Newtons. And likewise, this one here will be 9.6. Okay? Now, How these you know three... Huh? How do you know it's Oh, because when I think about the formula, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, if only one of the charges half, then the force will half. Because everything else is the same in the formula. Yep. Now, will these forces uh, combine with this one? Yes. How will they combine? in such a way that these components take away from this. Now, what's really nice is, what they made nice about this question is, this left component will be exactly the same as the right component. Why? Well, are these forces the same? Yes. Are these angles the same? Yes. Okay, so, we need to work out what this is. This will be, now, so, this will be 9.6 times 10 to the 6, 
But there's two of them yeah. times two times cos this angle. Now what's this angle? Well, we have to work it out. Yeah, if this is 120, isn't it? And this is 90. So this one here is 30. Which means this one here is 30. Because that's 90. Yes, yeah, so it's a bit messy, but you get 30, don't you? No. Let's draw this on the side and find out. Circle. That, that peace sign. Um, right. Ah, flip it. Excuse my foul language. Uh, right, let's draw a horizontal line here. How much is this? Well, if this is 120 and this is 90, then this one here? 30. Okay, and I have... Um, I have my vector here. Okay, this is 30, likewise this is 30, correct? So, that, oh sorry, so you're correct, this is 60, not 30, sorry. Uh, cost 60. Uh, so, what's cost 60, please? Cost 60 is 1 over 2. Is it? Yeah. Great. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. So, when you do this one minus this one, in total you'll be left with 9.6 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Because what will happen is this 1 over 2 will cancel this 2. So you're just left with 9.6, which takes away from the 19. So the answer is 9.6 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb downwards. Is the final answer. Flipping hard question for... It's good. For section, for section A. Not for section A. Yeah? Ooh. No. I like your thinking, but the reason we can't is because this system will not be in equilibrium. When you place the particle in the center, it will move. But I do encourage this, uh, this, uh, deceptive, this, uh, not deceptive, uh, answer dark type of thinking. Uh, it's good. It's a good idea. Unfortunately, it's not in equilibrium. Did you try it using money? Or it just was an idea? An idea, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. What's that? Uh, it's in the formula book. I believe it's 8.99 times 10 to the 9. This is a very hard question for section A. Like, it really is a stinker of a question. It's seven marks, but... You have to work hard for seven marks, like, really hard. Did you say something, Shelton? It's quite horrible. And trust me, the uh, worst version is when they do it like this. They put it in a rectangle. Four forms. <laughs> yeah, there's four of them, and each one has to be resolved. So there's eight components that have to be combined. If you think about it, here it was quite nice because these components combined and cancelled, and these components combined with this one. So really, I was only looking at one direction here, whereas in this version, I have eight components and two directions to look at. Mm. Now, Audrey, um, I don't know if there is some kind of sneaky way to do this that if you look online you might discover some tricks, but when I look at the marking scheme, it's done the same way as how I've done it. But it seems like because the picture is so nice and symmetric that there's there may be there's some shortcut here for this that's online somewhere. I, I'm not sure. We get marked here. I don't know because what happens is I, I correct it and sometimes they're like, yeah, and sometimes they're like, no. So I don't really know. I try my best. But Uh, you got to understand the 
problem. I would look at the marketing scheme, and if I felt like there was any fuzziness in the marketing scheme, I will use this as an opportunity to give a student a mark if I can. But the NCUK who checks the exam, you know, they're working on the opposite side. So they don't want students getting marks easily. So if there was fuzziness in the marking scheme, they will interpret it to the student's disadvantage. Whereas, of course, as being your teacher, if there was fuzziness in the marking scheme, I would interpret it to the student's advantage. So ultimately, they will win because it's their final decision. So I can tell you, yeah, I'll give you a mark, or I'll do this, or I'll do that, but really it's what, the question is, what will they do? And they can sometimes be quite strict, as we've seen earlier, with the mark, even if the, the, co the consequence is the student goes down to 39. But what about the European? Like, does it work? Well, sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. And if you're trying to ask me how you can know if it will, it's impossible to know. How, how do you know? No, the school will, on behalf of the student. Yeah, you don't need to do any work. The student. So, the point is, when you get the results, and if you've got a 39, you can be assured that the school has already made an effort. Do you know? Now, the student can further appeal, but in my opinion, there's not much that can be done, because whatever that could have been done, the school would have done it on behalf of the student, like they would have said, ah, oh, but this, or but that, or the student was sick, or there was this problem, or whatever. So... A D. It's a fail. It's an E. Oh, yeah. What does mean fail mean? Oh, if it's, it's very difficult to place a student if they're on a fail. Because it means it's not possible. No, just it's extremely difficult. Like we might be lucky, we might find them one course in one university somewhere in the UK or Ireland, but it's a uh, very difficult thing. And the student, their choice is take it or don't. There's no choices. So please don't, so don't break my heart by doing something like this. <laughs> just don't. You will make mistakes in the exam. You'll lose 10% automatically by making stupid mistakes. That when I show you afterwards, if I could show you afterwards, you would agree. That's a stupid mistake. Uh, I tell you a stupid mistake that two of my students made in September. Look at this. You would never make this mistake in class, but in the exam, two of my students, two good students, A students, did this in the math exam. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Oh. Oh, this come Two A students did this. A student means A grade. A grade. Oh. Two of them. These are students with an A and an A star. And they did this. So, straight away you will lose 10% to something I call being stupid. You would never make this mistake in class. But in the exam you're like, oh. My future's at stake. I can't think straight. Ah! <laughs> That's what happens. No, no, no. Because it just means 90% is kind of the ceiling. What was the message then? It was hard or cute? Math was all right. The engineering students did quite well in math. I mean, it was difficult, but I mean, they did well. The physics uh, was a bit more mixed. The, the students who did well in maths did well in physics. There was one strange student who did really well in maths and really poorly in physics. You only were in maths, but... Usually, usually it goes, like, you can have good maths and good physics, bad maths and bad physics. You can have good maths and bad physics. But I find that they usually move together. So, so, so far for me, I have been having good enough Yeah, maybe you'll be another one of these students then. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is giving me so much stress because uh, I studied a lot and I can't solve anything. Uh, we can continue with this now. Um, really, what I expect now for the next two weeks is again, like today, we'll do questions that you're stuck on. And what I hope is, as time goes by, there will be more people who have questions because they've tried more.
So there's more for me to do in class, okay? So as Bruce and Calvin, sorry, Bruce and sorry, sorry, Bruce and Darius, sorry, uh, you've done zero, of course. So for the next class, please see how many you can get done. And the three of you, isn't it you, you, and you in Moran's boat? Sorry, this is the name of your boat because I've asked you first. Uh, yes, if you can try and focus on this rather than the workbook, okay? And we'll see how much we can get done. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, what are you going to do tonight? To enjoy the sunshine? Yeah. No, you're not going to do that. No, no. Anyway, you can do it in the garden. Oh, yeah. yeah. Go to the beach with your physics book. 